There we go. Oh, we're moving now. On the left, Carlos, Al Carlos Alberto, a.k.a. Bebeto. On the right, Richard Alacon. Quarterfinal match in the light featherweight division. No surprise to see Bebeto on bottom. If you've not seen Alacon compete, very scrappy, very strong wrestling. Has a, an MMA and wrestling background, but it's a black belt under Giva Santana from One Jiu Jitsu. Also had a pretty decent run at Kasai and ADCC trials in the past. Uh, very underrated grappler with a, a, lo a lot of strong skills that he can bring to this match. The trick here, I feel, for Bebedo is choosing a strategy that, that negates Alakon's strengths. And that may be to try and tie him up into some, some guards, try and slow him down because you give that guy space and it can be a handful. Right now we see not the best angle. We can't really see what's happening right now because the referee is in the way. But I feel this is where Alakon wants to be. He wants to be on the outside. He wants the distance passing. And I feel like uh, Bebeto, he wants to try and get the Delaheva. He wants to try and make that connection because you get into a foot race with, uh, with Richard Alakon and it's pretty dangerous. Yeah, Bebeto's got such an agile guard, really, really versatile. Haven't seen a, a lot of leg locks from him, but I feel like his game would transition quite nicely into that modern game here. But Alarcon's well aware of it, and you can see him kind of uh, aborting that, that mission there and, and trying to reset, but Bebeto has a nice bite right now as far as his guard is concerned. Let's flatten him out, get him off his side. I think Alarcon's gonna really try and work to get chest to chest eventually, because the, the frames of Bebeto are formidable. You can see here, moving into single leg X, maybe chase thinking it, it. exposing a heel. Let's use that left foot in the hip. Here he is moving into his, still has a straight ankle lock grip, will use it to almost score two points, earns an advantage for his efforts. Alcon's Robert, so got this low posture. His head is very forward. So he's driving his knee into that reverse Dallaheva and putting a lot of pressure. It's going to make it difficult for Bebeto to extend with it. But it's a risky strategy to go into somebody's guard, right? You know, because he, you're pushing the knees against their chest in this kind of position, which is uh, generally what the bottom guy wants. He wants his knees as close to his chest as possible. And that enables Bebeto to spin underneath, trying to maintain control of that ankle to possibly turn this into a reversal, but Alakon up and out. And I feel that if Alakon does have a, a path to the top position here that he may need to he may need to try and pin the legs, pin the feet to the floor and, and separate the knees away from the upper body to try and get that top pin. Because right now, the further he goes forward and the harder he goes forward. Oh, look at this. Is Pepeto trying to get a leg entanglement here? He's trying to get that, that right leg over the top, it seems. He's drawing the ankle towards him and now he could come up here for a two he's managed to suck their legs together there is a guillotine in place so no points this is pretty good but Beto's backpedaling a little bit does not like the pressure on his neck hard to see if this is a head and arm guillotine or if this is uh, an anaconda choke from this grip the, it does look pretty deep and Alicon is hooking the leg as well so we could see a solid advantage for this submission attack 
I think we may see Alicorn try and shoot the arm through for an Anaconda choke here. Gets the reverse over the top, and then Babeto gets his head out. There is an advantage for Alicorn here. Now it's 1-1 one, one for the other. For the advantages here, it's still 0 0 on the scoreboard at the halfway mark. Alicorn's running into the problem of, of working his outside passing, but not really being able to cut the angle he needs. And we've always seen him drive into the guard, as we pointed out earlier in this match. So Babeto, we knew, had an impressive defensive guard. And Alicorn does not quite seem to know how to un unravel this puzzle quite yet. is two advantages to one for Babeto at this stage with just over three minutes remaining and back into this close guard position I feel like Alicorn maybe could could benefit from switching up his strategy a touch What do you think, Chase? you think that Alicorn should uh, maybe try dropping back for a leg here? It's coming to that moment in the match. The final two minutes is always sort of uh, the last minute to make some serious changes in the approach where you have enough time to make a significant uh, series of attacks. We see Alicorn still pushing forward, pushing ahead. I think dropping back may be dangerous at, at this point because he is only down by a single advantage where he could give up two points if he uh, goes for a leg lock and it doesn't work out in his favor. It's a great view so of in any case, position. he needs to pull something off because uh, I think even if he ties the advantages, it, it may go the way of Beto should it come to decision. Bet the danger, of course, is going for a leg, a leg attack against somebody like Bebeto is that uh, they're so good at, he's so good at countering those kind of positions with a, uh, with a back take. This is the, the real danger against using the leg attacks against guys who have great guards, guys who have the really good leg work. Yeah, and Alicorn is certainly no stranger to the leg lock game, and I think he would have taken that opportunity if he thought it was available. So it may be an act of desperation at this point, which, you know, he's a disciplined competitor. He doesn't think it's a good idea. At the same time, 50 seconds left. It would be a good moment to empty the gas tank here and just try anything to get that, that advantage at the very least. Last 30 seconds of this match here and see Babeto trying to come up after the leg but real chance for Alcon to step on the gas here still. And if he can get one solid submission attack, I mean he already has the, uh, the guillotine 
front headlock choke from earlier. The Alberto, excuse me, uh, advantages came from sweeps. So, oh, here we go. There's the triangle choke. Look at this. Going high is Bebeto. We need to change the angle. We can't see here. There. Now we're seeing him going high for the triangle and no vantage score for the triangle, but they will see time go. And that is going to be Bebeto who advances through to fight Junior Ocasio in the semi final a little later today, expecting that to go down around about 11.30. Okay, well, more action coming up soon. Let's uh, take a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs> 